and welcome to Analysis with me, John Rees. Bosnia is conducting its first census since the end of the war which shook the region in the 1990s. A census is not normally newsworthy, but in Bosnia it's an intensely political and disputed event. Under the 1995 Dayton Peace Agreement, which ended the Balkan conflict, only Muslims or Bosniaks, Serbs and Croats could have access to legislative positions. The division of power was based on a pre-conflict census, according to which 43% of the population was Muslim. But the Muslims now fear that their community, and the largest in the country, may itself fragment. Nathaniel Amos Sansom has more. Bosnia stands at a crossroads. The first comprehensive census in over 22 years is a politically charged event, where old anxieties about the tentative power-sharing agreement have come to the fore. The last census was conducted in 1991, before the collapse of the former Yugoslavia and the Bosnian civil war. It reported that Bosniak Muslims represented 43% of the population, and Serbians and Croats represented 31 and 17% respectively. Following the Dayton Peace Agreement in 1995, this data was used as the basis for splitting the country up between constituent peoples, dividing the country between Serbian and Bosnian Croatian republics. The country's 180 civil service positions were then divided up proportionally along this basis. Since this division of power is about to end, political and religious leaders have called on their respective constituencies to take part, or else fear losing representation. I feel as a Bosniak and I am stressing it because until now it was not the case. People didn't know who they were. The current size of the Muslim population, who were not recognized as an ethnic group by the former Yugoslavia until 1974, is estimated to be about 2 million. But the census may also help to shed light on the population loss in places like Srebrenica, where an estimated 8,000 Bosniaks lost their lives. Before the war, there were 110 houses and thousands of residents in Krusev Dol. There are now 35 houses and only 10 or 11 houses have someone living there. Muslim leaders have been urging their supporters to take part in the census, but some fear that their community could become split by people defining themselves either as Muslim, Bosniak or Bosnian on the census, meaning that the country's largest group loses representation in government. There is also a campaign by the citizens above all groups to eschew religious and ethnic labels and declare themselves other on the census. They want to end the practice of ethnic quotas in government and bring the national constitution in line with the European Court of Human Rights ruling that it was discrimination. When Islam Channel spoke to Lord Ashdown, former High Representative of Bosnia and Herzegovina, we asked whether the census could upset the delicate balance of power in the region. Do you mean will we return to conflict? Thunder. No, I don't believe you will. I don't think there's a will for that. I, I mean, I have to say that things are now so febrile in Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, and I blame, I think, in some measure, the Bosnian political leadership, but in very, very large measure, Europe's complete failure to drive through the reforms that are necessary. And this is Brussels' problem as much as Sarajevo's. Uh, things have got very febrile. The idea that the census would create tension uh, is, I think, a deliberate misrepresentation. Huge tension has been created by a rise in the rhetoric of nationalism on all three sides, but chiefly, actually, the Serbs to start with and then the Bosniaks, um, by the political leadership, not reflected, in my view, by the population. Um, and the census could easily. The census is always a very, very political issue in a multi-ethnic country. Of course it is. Um, but it could add to that. However, will it lead to conflict? In my view, no. Um, I have to confess that for the first time um, in the last couple of years with ethnic and nationalist tensions and rhetoric running so high, I cannot now totally exclude the possibility of some idiot throws a bomb in a mosque in Doboy on a Friday night uh, of what might come out of that. But I don't think it's likely to return to conflict and it's certainly not likely to return to conflict particularly quickly in my view. I think the real danger for Bosnia now, Bosnia and Herzegovina now, is not a return to conflict. The real danger is that this country sinks and is led by its politicians and allowed by Brussels to sink into a black hole of dysfunctionality, criminality and corruption. And while the rest of the Western Balkans moves forward towards European Union membership, Bosnia stays stuck 
a black hole that the international community can never leave because it could lead back to conflict. On the other hand, it can't advance at all. And I think that will be utterly, utterly, utterly deadly. Not as bad as war, but nearly as bad as war for all those wonderful people, gifted people of Bosnia and Herzegovina, whose only future can be in the European Union. And that's the danger, not war, in my view. With Bosnia looking to apply for EU membership, it is likely that its current constitution and power-sharing agreement will be abolished in the coming years. But whether this census does anything to heal the deep-seated religious and ethnic divisions in Bosnia is harder to predict. Nathaniel Amos Samson, Islam Channel. Well, joining me in the studio to discuss these questions is Masoud Sajara, President of the Islamic Human Rights Commission. On Skype from Bosnia is Darko Brakan, President of Why Not, a Sarajevo-based non-governmental organization. On the phone from Jordan, we have Mustafa Cherik, who's Grand Mufti of Bosnia and President of the World Bosniak Congress. And on the phone from Bosnia itself, we have Kamel Pavanic, who's a concentration camp survivor and human rights activist. Uh, welcome to the program. Um, Masood, um, what do you think is at stake here in this census? Well, it's at stake the identity of Bosnia-Herzegovina, and I think this was the issue that, you know, at the time of the conflict, we were extremely concerned with. You know, we had uh, on one side uh, of uh, the former Yugoslavia breaking up and becoming sort of Serb, Croat, and then the identity of, of Bosnians were identified as Muslims, you know. Uh, we didn't have uh, the concept of Catholic, uh, sort of Orthodox and Muslim. Mm -hmm. It was really very unbalanced. And then when, you know, the, the sort of resolution to conflict came, and, you know, this is a long story, uh, again, you know, the Serbs got their own piece of land, the Croats got their own piece of land, but the Bosnians were actually not given their own piece of land. They were actually divided into this category again, the same category, you know, Croat, Serb, and Muslim. And, and so the identity of Bosnian was actually removed from them completely. And I think that is really at the heart of this. You know, anywhere else in the world, people are part of a national identity. And then within that, they have their own religion and then their own, and, and you know, indeed, when the majority of the people are from certain religion, that becomes the state religion and others are become minority, which need to have their rights protected and so forth. But the fact that that didn't happen, it actually creates this scenario that now we've got this problem of lack of identity for people. And people want to move forward, some of them, so they're changing their identity and others are being forced to preserve the sort of the Muslim identity or the, Croat, uh, the, the Catholic identity and so forth. Uh, churches and things are getting involved and actually asking people even to come back just to be part of the census while they're not living in the country. And this is sort of very clearly been art articulated by some Catholic uh, priest. That is the problem, really. I think at, at the you know at the heart of it. Uh, Kamal, let's let me bring you in. Do, do, do you think that that is essentially? I think what Masood is saying is this is the unfinished business of the Dayton Accord. Do you think the census can um, can resolve some of these issues? Well, I can tell you that uh, this is not a true census. I was one of the census makers in the last census in 1991, so I know what, what sort of data you are supposed to collect in a census. And I have participated in, in, um, in a census in the UK two years ago. So there's a number of questions you are asked, and you collect the data to examine the situation on the ground to make plans for the next 10 years. What happened uh, with this census in Bosnia is that it's been highly politicized. It should have really happened 12 years ago. So it's been postponed over the last 12 years. And finally, when we have reached the point where we can establish how many people live in this country and you know, how many properties we have. So do we have enough properties for everyone who lives in the country? And so on and so on. So this is the real data which should matter. Unfortunately, we end up in the situation where the census has become a, a continuation of the war by other means. So suddenly, it, uh, for all sorts of reasons, it's become important to emphasize, you know, one's identity. And uh, I'm, I'm afraid uh, and there are all sorts of problems with the census. Uh, things are not working well. Uh, just yesterday, in a town in eastern Bosnia, uh, in a town called Vishagrad, which was 
uh, a Muslim majority, a Bosnian majority town before the war. Now there's only a small proportion of Bosniaks who return. So uh, Bosniak census makers were thrown out of a meeting. You know, they were not allowed to be present mm. in this meeting. Only third, third census makers were allowed to stay in the meeting, and they were given a number of forms to take to their, you know, uh, census units. And uh, so, so we, this is just one problem which has occurred since the census started. Okay, well, let, let, me just, let me just put that... Let me just... No, hang on just a minute, just a minute. Just let me bring Mustafa in here. Um, Mustafa, do you, do you think that that's the case, that the, the process here... Um, is not uh, resolving the unfinished uh, business of the war, but I embedding the problems. Uh, the census is um, is not authoritative enough to to help here. Uh, good good evening. First of all, evening. Uh, um, no, I, I I don't think that uh, there is a problem about census, uh, except for some people who are still having their own identity crisis. And then uh, their own identity crisis, they would like to spread to others. Uh, we live in the world in which uh, all the individuals and the nations have multiple identities. We have no unified uh, one identity for each. Like in your, your in like in Britain, you have English, British, Scottish. And you cannot be, you cannot become English. You can be only born English, but you can become a British. So British can be a Pakistani, Arab, and all others. I think if from this discussion we should leave religion. Religion is something that has that is private in your own heart. We are talking here about uh, national identities in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Of course, uh, we are all Bosnians belonging to the state of Bosnia. But uh, the, uh, the same is the same uh, way as all people of different ethnical groups are British. But no one is uh, uh, disputing uh, or obstructing them to feel that they are at the same time Scottish uh, and uh, English and Pakistani and Arab and all others. Mm. So in, the same thing in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, we have different ethnical groups that Bosnians, Croats, and Serbs. Okay, let me... Uh, let me, let me question let me of the Serbian national identity is no question because all Serbs have uh, decided or long time they form their national identity without the question. They send them to uh, the court. The only problem that people have now, and especially Serbian and uh, uh, Croatian nationalists, and some Bosniaks who, are, who have some kind of uh, oikophobia, uh, meaning that they have difficulty to accept what they are, but this is very right. Okay. Let, let, me, let, me, um, let, let me bring in uh, Daka Brakan now. Uh, where do you stand on this? Uh, because we've had two very different points of view there, that uh, there isn't really a problem um, uh, with, this, uh, with this census and there isn't really a problem with multiple identities. Uh, and another view that the census is really, is really not helping. Uh, what's your view? Look, first of all, we have to understand that the census is a very important statistical exercise for the country. And that means that the data that's going to be gathered by the census should be used for economic, social, and every other planning that we need. And we actually, especially in the last 22 years, since we had the, the like, since we didn't have the census, there have been many changes in the country and many, especially on the on demographic side. And and, and the, the problem with, with the census and ethnicity question and the census even being asked is that actually, it, it is making it political and making the results of the census less credible. So, first of all, I need to stress that actually uh, I don't think that there was a need to to have that question at, on the census at all. But like when we are when we are getting to the question, uh, actually uh, the the only way that the question on the census, the the, the results of the of the ethnicity question on census are going to be used is for potential political purposes. 
uh, there are some legislations that are referring to the census, but there are very few of them. Actually, uh, it is just uh, it will be used for reinforcing the, the the potential for future politics or for some sort of a new potential new arrangement in Bosnia. Uh, if you look at the current constitutional arrangement in Bosnia, there is one thing obvious, and that is that the constituent peoples or constituent ethnicities uh, that are Serbs, Croats, and Bosniaks uh, have in many ways exclusive political and civic rights compared to the people who either don't want to declare their ethnicity or are of, other, of, of another declaration or are just not thinking that, that actually ethnicity is the basic for their political identity. And, and actually that's, uh, that's one thing that, that where I stand on is that actually census when there is the question of ethnicity could be a place where these people can actually express their protest against the current constitutional construct in Bosnia and say that discrimination needs to be abolished from the from the constitution. So that would be my position. If there would be any use of the ethnicity question in the census to, to use it in a way to finally put a stop to the discrimination that's been a part of our constitution ever since we were formed as a state. Okay. Uh, Masood, uh, I mean, th there's obviously very sharp um, differences here about um, whether or not that question should have been asked, um, uh, whether or not um, it will be used to um, institution further institutionalise uh, a, a sort of discriminatory setup. What do you think? Well, I, I think when uh, you listen to these different views and there are very legitimate views and, and, and indeed uh, they've got supporters, all these views within Bosnia, um, um, you see that there is there is a consensus that yes there is a uh, census needs to be done for obvious reasons mm. of uh, for, for future reasons, building yeah. as normal reasons, but then also Bosnia is not a normal circumstances. You know what happened the way it was divided as I said created problem. Yes, we do have multiple identities, uh, and you know uh, we all do you know, in Britain. But we all also believe that we are British. You know, uh, if a group of us believe that they are not British, and, and indeed we had a situation that uh, one of our neighbours, which we went to war with, had a different identity, and there are a bunch of a group of us within our nation which are refusing to accept the national identity or a non-discriminatory identity, as, as it was uh, highlighted, and want to identify with that warring faction and the nations which is outside, it will create problem. Mm. And, and this is exactly and, and what and we've and, got. And, 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 and we do indeed have a Scottish referendum coming up. So it, it, may, it may be that even in very old unitary states like Great Britain, um, it, it, yeah. it's possible that... that but but, but can you imagine we will end up with an independent Scotland and then there are border towns, there are some Scottish, they mm. say, oh, look, we, want, we don't identify and we want to be identified. It will create problem. Mm. Uh, but this is after so many years of uh, peace and tranquility in Britain, mm. you know, United Kingdom, but we are talking about Bosnia and Herzegovina, which didn't have that, and indeed, even the constitution is racially divisive. I mean, this is uh, exactly what happened, and, and many people in Bosnia want to actually free themselves from that, and many people are holding identities which is alien to the main identity of uh, Bosnia, and this is the problem. And I, I, but I, I think at the end of the day, that has to be resolved. And I think, you know, there needs to be help and support from outside also to say that, you know, that sort of extreme views of trying to even divide further Bosnia and Herzegovina, it will not be tolerated mm. internationally and it should not be tolerated internally. And those who are promoting that and taking advantage of this uh, sort of censors to uh, fuel this sort of uh, arguments needs to be uh, sort of um, they, they need to be sort of warned what is the consequences of that is. Mm. Uh, uh, Darko, I mean, you, you were saying that, 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 you know, that you fear that the legitimate purposes um, of a census which, which is necessary um, may be, uh, may be um, overshadowed by this uh, political dimension of it. Is there anything that can be done post the census which would prevent it being used in the ways that you fear? Well, uh, to, first of all, I think that, that some of the problems and some of the issues we have currently with the census process uh, cannot be handled after the census. They need to like basically be handled during the census or we might have problems with, with the credibility of the overall 
data that we get. And, and actually, there have some of most of these problems are connected to the census being politicized as it is. And, and actually, the institutions were not able to, to, to agree amongst each other on different issues, on the data protection issues, on the technical issues, on the census. And actually, what we have today is pretty much the failure of the whole process. There have been so, ma so many misuses of the census. There have been so many technical mistakes, even uh, breaches in, in implementing of the legislation of the census, that at this moment, it is very questionable where, whether the results can be considered to be something that we can use or not. Mm. And that's, that's the problem on the technical side. We're having uh, definitely the ethnicity question, since like we're, we're getting like hundreds of, uh, hundreds of different complaints by the people all over the country on, 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 on the census. Most of them, over 80% of them, are in a way connected to the ethnicity question. So what I'm suggesting is that at least the ethnicity question Will not the, the results that we get will not be credible enough for us to even take them into account. Okay. I'm just hoping that the, the other results, the other data that we need, will be at least credible so that we can do the necessary things with them that we need, at least to establish what's the number of population, what's our economic status, what's our household status, and everything we need from the sense. Okay, Mustafa, do, do, do you accept that there, that there are now complications with the running of the, uh, of the census and complaints uh, uh, about the running of the census, particularly on this question, which um, uh, may make the answers, at least on this question, um, unreliable or unusable? Well, I, did, I could not hear your guests uh, and their arguments, so it's very difficult for me to... Develop. Yeah, the, the essential point was that there's the, 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 the process is being corrupted, at least on the answer to the ethnicity question, and therefore the results won't be usable. I mean, I mean, if we did not yet finish uh, this uh, census, and then we are accusing and uh, predicting uh, and uh, about the... Uh, of course, uh, nothing is perfect in this world, but I am very glad that we have census. We should allow the people who are working there to finish that, if there are some uh, uh, incorrections, uh, they should be corrected, of course. But uh, what I think it is good that the Bosnian Herzegovina is after the war, after the genocide against the Bosniaks, uh, and after uh, all this what we have experienced, now we have something uh, to show to the world and to count ourselves in Bosnia and Herzegovina and let everyone express himself the way he wishes. Those who want to express themselves, their nationalities, they should be free to do so. And those who don't want to express their nationalities or to be whatever they like, they have to be free. So we have to, we have to see and know uh, what, how many people we have there. Okay, and thank you. The question of how you. Yeah, are I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to bring you, just have to bring you to a halt because I want, do want to get a final word from Masood. I mean, do you think that this now is a situation where um, the the result? will be so unreliable because of um, of the process that uh, that it that it can't help I'm worried that this censors when it comes to the issue of nationality and identity because of the fact that there is not a uh, identity which is everyone ad adheres to like you know here in the UK we have and it's going to be divisive and that politics of division is going to continue which will be detrimental for Bosnians. OK, well, that's some frayed where we're going to have to leave it because we've run out of time on the first half of the programme. But do rejoin us for the second part of analysis after the break.